Hi guys, Walsh here with a quick correction. Throughout the video, I constantly called the velocity vector the heading indicator, and that is wrong. It is velocity vector. Apologize for that, and apologize for my general diction and stammering and hemming and hawing throughout the video. Hope you enjoy. Please uh, drop any comments if you see anything that needs corrected. Thanks. All right, cockpit tour. On the left panel here, the only things that are functional is the engine crank, the APU. Here is your refueling probe. Uh, and then in front of the throttle, they're obscured right now, is a couple of lighting controls for exterior lights. You've got your throttle here. Uh, moving up on the left front panel, taxi lights there, uh, launch bar there, parking brake here. Moving up a little bit more, you've got the jettison for your drop tanks there. Here to the right, this is called the IFE. It gives you fuel and engine information. Uh, this is our master arm here. Turn your master arm on and off and master modes, air to ground, air to air there. The screen here, the DDI, is a digital data indicator. This is your left DDI. This is your right DDI. This digital display in the front is called the UFC, or upfront controller. Obviously, that's the HUD. Down here is the uh, multi-purpose color display. MPCD. Continuing over here, uh, these are warning lights. Actually, I don't believe these are modeled on this. Um, you've got here the toggle to turn the helmet mounted device on and off. Flight instruments here, an attitude indicator, a RAR, a speedometer, altimeter, and a VSI. Down here, switch for the wings toggle. You've got the canopy toggle there. And then the only functioning switches on the right panel is going to be your battery toggle here. Uh, some interior lighting here, dash and panel lights, and then the radar operation there. Okay, DDIs. Each DDI can be set to whichever screen you like. There's a lot of options. You can use the HUD repeater like that. Uh, and this center button here, the these buttons on the outside are called OSBs. They're numbered OSB 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. But the center lower OSB will always take you back out of whatever screen you're in back to a menu screen. So this is the tactical menu. This is the support menu. In the TAC menu, you can put up the HUD repeater like we just had. You can put on your attack radar. Uh, whoop, that's the HUD again. So I go back. Attack radar there. There's our attack radar. Go back, you can put a stores page, shows you what all you have, and that's how you select weapons. You can put uh, FLIR, which is your targeting pod. And you can put on early warning right here, which is your, um, it's essentially a RAR repeater, and we use that for seed missions, or situational awareness here, which is an enhanced HSI. Um, that's the TAC menu. On the support menu, you've got your HSI. It's essentially a lesser capable version of the situational awareness page. Uh, ADI, is ADI working? No. I know FPAS and fuel pages are not working. UFC, not. Flight control systems, not. Checklist, not. All right, so it looks like nothing on the support page aside from the HSI right now is working. All the other DDIs you can set up exactly the same as that. They're totally customizable and functional. So it just depends on how you like to roll. Personally, I keep my attack radar on my left DDI. I keep my early warning on my right DDI. And down here, I keep situational awareness page. So that's my typical setup when I'm doing air to air. Air to ground, very similar, but I'll have. Um, a ground radar on one of the DDIs and then the um, SA on the other DDI. When you're manipulating data in the DDIs, uh, there's a concept that's called SOI, or sensor of interest. It's pretty universal across US airplanes. What that means is whatever screen is SOI or chosen as sensor of interest at that time, all your little finger manipulations on your uh, HOTAS will just relate to that particular screen. So you need to bind some keys for that. Options, controls, uh, configure add-ons, and choose the Hornet. And you're going to want sensor control switch bound up, down, left, and right. Bind it to whatever you like. 
uh, and the sensor control switch is what you use to set soy as well as uh, do a little bit of stuff with other weapons so if you see here I'm gonna I have sen um, sensor control switch left bound to left and when I click left see this little diamond that appears right there on the left DDI make it go away now it's back go way back when that diamond is up that screen is soy so now any manipulation that I do with my throttle will just only occur on that screen now I push uh, right right button I'm sorry right arrow that's no longer soy now I have the diamond there so this screen is soy you can also make your HUD soy it's indicated by the diamond there in the upper corner and your lower MF uh, or multifunction display soy there so that is soy All right, we're going to do a cold and dark startup here. First, I'm going to scroll wheel and hide the pilot body. Make it a little easier to see. Battery on. Over here, APU on. And then we wait for the green ready light on the APU. While we do that, formation lights on. Obscured by the throttle there is position lights. Those are on. There's our green ready light. We can crank the engine on. Uh, in Arma, you just need to crank the one engine. Go ahead and close the canopy. And we're waiting for 20 RPMs on the engines. There's 20 RPMs. Come down here to the throttle and click idle to bump the throttle into idle. And the plane will come to life. There we go. Now that the engines are spooling up, we can turn our APU off. Come over here. You can set your lights, interior lights here as desired. Down here, radar into operate. Up front, let's turn our HUD on there. Down here, landing taxi light on. Launch bar is accessible here as needed for carrier. Um, we're going to turn our parking brake off here and acknowledge master caution there. And we are good, ready to roll and take off. Just adding a quick note here on how to do a carrier launch is very simple. Uh, I'm operating today on the Freedom carrier because we do not have the Nimitz in our mod pack right now. Um, on the Freedom, all you do is taxi up to the cat. If you're operating on the Nimitz, you're going to go ahead and extend your launch bar here. Um, because I'm on the Freedom, it's throwing that error, but don't worry, that error won't hurt anything. So now taxi up to the cat here, and you want to be careful once you get a little closer. You don't taxi too far. And once you're in position, you'll get a little graphical representation. It tells you to push the square, or the space. There it is. Hold space to initiate launch. All you have to do is hold space there. They'll get you locked up into the cat, and then off you go. Just a little bit of back pressure, full throttle, and uh, maintain your heading. And then turn off into the pattern or into the climb. Okay, on to case one. Carrier landing. Uh, case one recovery is a good weather daytime landing on the boat. Um, there are all kinds of procedures and stuff that you need to do. Obviously, in Arma, these are greatly simplified. So, number one, we make sure our hook is down. Now we're begin going to begin our recovery pattern. We're going to fly alongside of the ship the same direction as we will be landing and observe the deck to make sure the deck is clear. And it is. So now we're going to fly, can maintain this heading, and we're going to dirty up the airplane. All that means is putting the flaps all the way down, the gear all the way down, and uh, making sure that our hook is down, which it is. So now we're fully dirty. We're going to begin a 180 degree turn um, onto the downwind leg, and we want to make sure there's a little bit of space between us and the boat, ideally about 1.2 miles. Now that we're in a dirty configuration on our HUD, we have this E bracket right here, this thing that's shaped like an E. And what we're going to do is try and get our velocity vector right there centered up on that E bracket. When we do, we'll be uh, on what's called on speed. And when we're on speed, we have our AOA indexer here will be lit up with a yellow circle. On speed is has the airplane in the proper configuration um, where it's most likely to catch its tail hook on the arrestor cables on the deck. So there you can see right there we're now on speed. Okay. So now right around here uh, we're going to begin a turn onto our final. And then what we'll try and do is just get our velocity vector on the deck. 
and uh, roll out more or less on the runway heading and then try and get on speed and land. Uh, on speed is really difficult, I'm finding, in Arma compared to other games just because there's no trim control. Normally you use trim uh, to get on speed, but it just doesn't exist in Arma. So have to do it stick and throttle, and it's certainly not easy. So we'll see where we're at, we'll try and roll out of here, and then roll see what we can do right. to get on speed somewhat. Okay, we're a little bit, cut that a little bit short, so I'm extending it. And okay, I'm going to fly this heading and then turn in right here. And we'll try and ride this all the way down. Got good on speed there. And there we go, we've got a good catch. Now, I don't know if you noticed up here, I did max my throttle as soon as we crossed the threshold. The reason that you do that is in case you get a bolter. What a bolter is, is it's when the arrestor hook skips the cables or flops over them, you'll skid off the end of the deck. So you go full throttle in case that happens so you have enough energy to take off uh, and go around for another try. We need something bound here that's pretty important. Options, controls. Configure add-ons, Super Hornet. You need to make sure that you have bound throttle designation controller up, down, left, right, and depress. Up, down, left, and right will slew your TAD or your targeting cursor around your radar page, and then depress will lock what you have it slewed on top of. All right, we're going to make a Maverick attack here. We're going to use the AGM 65G. This is the non-laser guided variant of the Maverick. Uh, it requires a contrast lock in order to fire. So. For the sake of Arma, what that means is it requires heat, or a hot target, to fire on, uh, to lock, actually, and then to fire on. Whether that be an engine uh, from a vehicle that's been driving for a while, or guns on a vehicle heated up from fighting for a while, you need one some source of heat uh, in order to do it. Let's get set up in the office here. We're going to go air to ground master mode. Now in our left DDI, we're going to box Mav-G once and twice. That brings the left DDI into the Maverick Seeker page. This is an indication of what the Maverick Seeker head is looking at. Uh, the smaller cross in the center is exactly what the optical sensor or the eye uh, in the optical sensor on the Maverick itself is looking at. And that may be offset somewhere on the screen to the left or right, up here or down there. That just means that it's looking within the confines of the sensor at one quadrant or another. It's where you've got it looking at. The bracket on the outside here is the field of view. Right now we're in wide field of view indicated by the brackets or zoomed out mode. You can use this OSB here to zoom into narrow or zoomed in field of view as desired. The cross that extends all the way on the DDI up and down left and right, as you can see it's not solid right now. When we do have a positive lock that cross will be solid all the way through. All right, we're going to switch our right DDI to our ground attack radar and we're going to make our ground attack radar soy indicated by that diamond there so that we can manipulate the tad all right and we'll turn back in towards the target area try and get some targets up on our radar we're going to lock one pause for a moment talk about the symbology on the HUD then we'll uh, prosecute the attack These targets out here somewhere. Range my radar out in preparation. There they are. Okay, we're gonna lock one of these close closest guys. Right there, we got a good lock. <coughs> and I'm just gonna turn the target offset a little to show the symbology. And pause. Okay, I apologize for this box here. All right, this upside down triangle right here is exactly what the Maverick head is looking at right now. As the Maverick head is currently caged, it's just looking straight forward. Uh, this is our heading indicator. This line that exists, uh, extends off the heading indicator, points towards the target that we've locked up. Uh, in this case, we locked a ground vehicle with our ground radar. So it's pointing towards that ground vehicle. This diamond is the target that we locked up, so obviously the tad, the tad is pointing, or the um, line is pointing at it. That's our locked target. 
All right, that lock target is 5.9 miles away from us, 5.9 target. Um, MAV-G right here, cross through, just indicates we do not have a good firing solution yet. 3-1 TTMR, that's 31 seconds time to minimum range. So it's 31 seconds at our current uh, flight configuration it will take us to reach a firing range. Once we are in range, underneath Maverick, it will say INRNG, in range. And then once, just because we're in range does not mean we have a good firing solution. Once we're in range and have a good firing solution, it will say in range. Uh, this will not be crossed. It'll be open. And this Maverick head seeker will be co-located with the target. They'll be on top of each other or correlated. So I'm just going to turn in towards the target now. In order to uh, to order the Mav Seeker head to try and correlate, you just switch the Mav page to Soy, which I'll do now. Soy, as you can see there, the cross is not connected, and the Seeker head's a little bit off center because our target is. So we're just waiting for that to connect, and you can switch back to the radar and then back to the Maverick again to try and force correlate again. There we go. Just pause for a sec. Uh, as you can see, we do have the cross there on our left DDI and then if you look up here at the HUD in range MAV-G is not crossed and the symbology is correlated so we're good to fire at this point point. Um, and if you're fast you could actually fire switch to a new target on the ra um, switch your soy to the radar switch to a new target switch back to the Maverick and if you have a good correlation you could fire again and ripple a second shot but you gotta be fairly quick All right, rifle And I did get lucky. I got another one locked, and another shot Pull off. Nope, Pull I locked the same guy, didn't I? There's impact on the first guy. Yep, I hit the same guy twice. But anyway, it gives you an idea of uh, how you do have to work fairly quickly. Next, we'll cover the AGM 65E and L. The AGM-65E is a laser-guided Maverick. Uh, the L does not exist, but it does exist in Arma, and it's also a laser-guided Maverick. You need a certain key set up for all laser weapons, and that's going to be your weapons release key, um, options, controls, configure add-ons, make sure you're on the F-18 Super Hornet, and then make sure you have weapon release button mapped. You need that button. Okay, let's get the office set up here. Master arm or is on, air to ground mode. We're gonna click Mav L once and twi whoops, missed it once and twice. And over here we're gonna open up the FLIR page for our targeting pod. And the last thing that we need to turn on is this switch down here for LTDR. This is our arms our laser. You in the actual jet you need to turn that on every time you fire the laser. It will automatically switch off, so you need to turn it on every time. In Arma, we just turn it on once, and we're done. All right, our left EDI is now on the Maverick uh, Head Seeker page. This is the Maverick Head and the acceptable uh, launch parameters. This X that's going back and forth is um, the Seeker Head looking for a laser target. Um, it's also replicated up here on the HUD, that triangle moving back and forth. So it's looking for a target that is a laser code 1111. That's the default code in Arma. You can use that, it's just fine, especially if you're the only airplane. If there's multiple Hornets operating, you might want to change that default code because you could accidentally pick up somebody else's lays and not hit the target that you want. Uh, in order to change that code, we're going to go to our Maverick here, hit UFC. I'm going to choose a new code, 11. Two, two, and then code. As you can see, that's changed there now. Now, in order to pick up that laser code, we need something that's lasing. Uh, most oftentimes, that will be us lasing from our own targeting pod, but it could also be a JTAC on the ground, or a FAC on the ground, or a FAC A, or an airborne uh, FAC, or a uh, buddy lace. Uh, since we are going to broadcast our own laser, we're going to go ahead and set our laser code to correlate with the Maverick. We'll do that by pressing UFC. 1122. 11. Nope. Doggone it. Clear. 
222, and then LTDC for laser target designator. Laser target designator. LT, uh, LSTC is laser spot track, and that's for just marking targets with an infrared uh, visible laser. Okay, we have our switch on. We have our code inputted on both uh, DDIs. We now need to find a target. So I'm going to turn in here. We'll open up the targeting pod and find a target. Down here somewhere. Uh, there's one. Boom. And get a point track. Now we've got a point track on him. You can see now our um, symbology is correlated. We're good. Um, I'm going to pause for just a second. The reason that we bound that weapon release key is when you press and hold the weapons release key for a moment, it will momentarily fire the laser right before the missile comes off the rail, and then it will keep the laser lit long enough for the missile to guide on it. So now we are in range, um, as indicated on our HUD up here. Uh, right there, you can see that we're in range. MAV is crossed out, but that's because the laser is not currently lit, and it's just a limitation of ARMA, the way that it works. As soon as we hold down weapons release, you'll see that will um, not be crossed out. The MAV will drop off the rail and it'll instantly start to guide. So I'm going to unpause. Again, we're in range. Everything's good. I'm going to hold weapons release. You can see right there, the MAV comes off the rail. Now MAV is not crossed out. In the upper right, you can see the laser is lit, indicated by the red laser and code 1122. So that's good guidance. That's tracking on the uh, enemy, and you can see there's an impact there. Rolling. That's all there is Rolling. to the laser Mavericks. Pretty simple, very effective, um, and good long range on those. All right, the next weapon system we're going to take a look at is the AGM-88 High-Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, or HARM. This is our primary, or one of our primary weapon systems for uh, suppression of enemy air defenses. It's excellent against um, SAM sites and very good against mobile SAM sites, uh, both of which must be radar guided. So this hones in and seeks enemy radar guidance. <coughs> comes in two flavors in ARMA, self-protect mode and target of opportunity. So in ARMA, unlike the real aircraft, self-protect mode um, essentially will launch on an enemy threat that puts a hard lock on us, uh, and it will automatically launch, autonomously come off the rail and launch at the enemy uh, without us pressing any fire button or anything. Uh, target of opportunity mode is just as you would expect in regular ARMA. You just cycle through targets and attack. So let's set up self-protect first. Uh, we'll go air to ground on, harm once and twice, self-protect mode boxed, and let's go over here and turn on our whoops, early warning receiver. There we go. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is turn in towards this enemy. We'll wait to see him on our early warning receiver, and then we want to put him inside the automatic launch envelope, which is essentially, oh, about probably 60 degrees on either side of the HUD there, um, so it's pretty wide. I'm going to turn that direction. Uh, let's see. Come around here somewhere. And you'll see, once we get the mud spike, things will happen relatively quickly. There'll be the seeking tone uh, for a minute, then the tone will change once he actually locks us up. There they are, I'm turning in. Once they lock us up, and you'll see the missile will automatically fire. I've got my hands nowhere near the fire button, um, the pickle button, or the trigger release, so this is all autonomous. Harm is fire and forget, so once it comes off the rail, we can immediately go defensive, turn away, dive for train. Okay, there's the saw, or the nails. I'm sorry, the mud spike. There goes our missile because he hard locked us. And you can hear the tone change. I'm flaring and diving. Defensive. Try and get some sort of terrain between me and the missile. Alright. We'll give it a sec and I believe we've got impact. Now I can go back up and take a look. One thing I did notice is that even after you splash the radar itself, um, the site still locks you for a while. It shouldn't. I don't understand it. I'm not sure if it's a bug or who knows, but I have noticed that. 
So I've got smoke way out there in the distance. Looks like we did get a good kill. And again, I touched nothing. All I did was have that thing essentially in front of us and in the self-protect mode, and that missile guided, uh, it launched and guided on that radar threat automatically. Um, another thing to note is I could have been in the Maverick page. Once you set this up into self-protect mode, you can be in another page doing anything, working another weapon system, and that missile will still guide on the enemy uh, and autonomously launch when you're doing something else. So we'll go now to target of opportunity mode. As I said earlier, this one is its pretty simple. It's exactly like old armor worked. I know there's several targets up here. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about um, self-protect is self-protect will not automatically launch against smaller radars. So the radars that are on mobile, uh, ZSUs, Tigris, Tunguska, it just has a hard time automatically picking those up. So it will only launch on bigger SAM systems with robust radars. All right, we're in target of opportunity, and there we go. I'm just cycling targets there. There's several targets there. You can just cycle through them and rip them all you want. Roll left. Roll left. There's like a couple splashes out there. Yep. You can see a few uh, impacts. Alright, we're going to look at laser guided bombs now. Let's go ahead and set up the cockpit. Air to ground. Whoop, air to ground mode on. Master armor's on. Mark 82 laser guide on. As a side note, you can use this mode button here to switch between auto and CCIP or continuously computed impact point. CCIP is your dumb bomb mode. Auto is what we use for our laser guidance. So if you wanted to dumb bomb for some reason, that's where you could switch into it. And we all know how to do those from our other airplanes. I'll finish setting up the airplane here. We're going to set our right DDI into FLIR. And then we're using laser guidance, so we need our LTDR switch on there. All right, we're set up. Turn towards the target area. We've got a uh, enemy ZSU out here dug in. Turn out that way. Get our targeting pod opened up and look for the enemy. Somewhere out there, there's something that looks like him. Get a point track on him. All right, we've got the point. I'm gonna zoom in on the HUD here a little bit, and well, no, I'm gonna zoom out so I can pause and talk about symbology on this HUD. Just wanted a little offset. There we go. Okay. Here, this diamond is uh, our target. Obviously, the heading indicator points towards the target. Right here, 23 REL. That's 23 seconds from release. So based on our current flight parameters, we would be 23 seconds from a bomb release. We're 2.9 miles from the target, as indicated there. We're in auto mode, as indicated there. Up here, the X is kind of in the right way, but that says L arm, laser arm. That means our laser is armed. Um, and then this line that extends right here, this is our P-bill line, predicted bomb impact line. What we need to do for this bomb delivery is get first in straight and level flight. So we need to climb up here, get our pitch uh, level. Then we want to maneuver to get this P-bill line right in the center of our pitch ladder. We want everything centered up. So the P-bill line runs right through the center, runs right through our heading indicator, everything nice and lined up. What will happen is, there's going to be this horizontal bar that starts up here off of the HUD, and it's going to run down the P-bill line. It'll run all the way down through our heading indicator. When that P-bill line, or I'm sorry, when that horizontal bar is running down the P-bill line, when it's about five seconds from passing through our heading indicator, we want to press and hold our weapon release key. Once the line goes through our heading indicator, the bomb will come off the rail and it will start to guide. Uh, some symbology on the HUD will change. Uh, this right here, the time to release, will change to a certain number and it'll say laser. It'll say like five seconds laser. That just means the bomb's falling and in five seconds the laser's gonna light, four seconds, etc. Once the laser lights, that will change to a number and it'll say TTI, which is time to impact. And up here, the laser arm will start flashing LTDR. 
that's how we know that uh, the laser is firing. All right, so I'm going to unpause and get us set up, and I'll just kind of talk through um, as the line comes down when I press the button, etc. All right, try to get level flight, and then we try and hold the uh, line as close as we can to the center there. Looks like we're five seconds from release. You can see that bar coming down. I'm now holding the pickle button. The bomb's away. You can see laser counting down on the right there. Three, two, one. The laser's going to fire. Now the laser's firing. You can see LTDR is flashing at the top of the HUD. We're five seconds TTI. Four, time to impact. Three, two, one. And there's an impact. I can turn and look. And yes, verify an impact, as you can see down there. One thing I didn't mention on this video or the Laser Guided Maverick is when you're doing laser guidance, you need to make sure that you have a nice, um, your targeting pod has good eyes on the target area. So if I was to have dropped that and then maneuvered aggressively like this or whatever, obviously my laser pod would no longer be able to have a laser on the target. So the uh, attack would fail. So when you're doing laser guidance, just keep nice stable flight. Or all right, we're going to have a look at JDAMs now. Air to ground master mode. JDAM on. FLIR on. Uh, over here we have two different delivery modes. Target of opportunity mode, or TOO, and pre-plan mode. We'll look at pre-plan first. So I've clicked pre-plan there. Click JDAM display. Now you have five pre-plan missions that you can populate here. I'm going to box pre-plan one. And we need coordinates to input into the UFC. So you could get those from the mission brief, uh, somebody on the ground that's calling for air support, or we can get them ourselves with onboard sensors, which I'm going to do. I'll scroll iTarget system. Now I'll use this. We're going to hit uh, Molos airfield up here. We'll hit this hangar. So I'm going to hit grid, click the hangar, and right here it gives us a 10 digit grid to write down. Got that. And we're going to do an additional uh, attack. We'll also hit this building here. So I'm going to hit grid click this building and write down that grid that it is 2587 tag 2127 all right we have our grids so let's get them inputted now we're going to hit UFC then we're going to hit grid and input our first grid that is 2675 Six four two four six four and enter. Okay, it gives us our first one populated there latitude, longitude, elevation, grid. We're going to hit pre plan two, do the same thing with the new grid. Hit grid uh, two five eight seven two five eight seven tag two one two seven two one two seven and our second mission populated. So let's click pre-plan one again and we're going to turn in towards the target area now. Looks like we're about 4.7 miles away. This attack is very similar to the laser. It's just the regular auto attack. We're going to hold the PIVA line in the center of the pitch ladder as much as we can and uh, wait for release. just to speed it up and then we'll hold the P-Bill line in the center of the pitch ladder about 15 seconds from release here 10 should see the bar falling soon 5 seconds here comes the bar coming down I'm now holding the pickle button and one away now we can quickly come down here hit JDAM display hit pre-plan 2 and there's the impact on the hangar as you can see it's burning we can now turn towards the second mission that we planned right there quickly get set up same thing ride the p-bill line in the center let's get a little bit leveled out here I think we're 10 
seconds from release. Five, the bar's coming down. I'm holding the pickle button now. And one away. Turn away from the thread on our north. Roll left. Roll left. And there's the effect. So that is pre-planned. Uh, next, we'll move on to target of opportunity. All right, target of opportunity mode, significantly more simple. We're in TOO mode. The simplest way uh, is to make a target attacks one at a time. We're gonna open our targeting pod. I'm gonna just choose a random target. We'll say this hilltop, put an area track on it there, close the targeting pod, and that is now set up as a target. We can just fly the PVIL line right there and make our attack. If we wanna change that target, open up the targeting pod again. Let's move it to a new area. Close the targeting pod and you'll see it's now over there okay now we can also set up multiple ripple attacks so let's turn this away and i'm gonna go down here to our jdam display and we're gonna box target of opportunity one now open our targeting pod choose a new target out here in front of us somewhere. Uh, we'll say way out there. We're just going to say that structure. Whoop. Yeah, you have to unbox and then reestablish an area track. There. Now close. Okay, that target is set. Go into our right left EDI, click TOO2, back into the targeting pod, Untarget that, choose a new target. We'll go just this rock pile over here. And set, close that. And now you can see TOO2 is an option. Go back to TOO1. Now we can fly to that target and make our attack. And then you could click down here on TOO2. As you can see, it changes the target over there and we can make that attack. Uh, if you were to set these up, in a line, in a linear fashion, you could drop this bomb, quickly switch to 202, get back on target and drop that bomb, etc. And you can have up to five, or I believe actually six, uh, TOO targets. So you can ripple them off in that way. I dropped the one bomb on the first target there, you'll see the impact, and then we could spin around and attack again, there's the impact. Could spin around and attack again, or like I said, set them up linear, linear, linearly uh, and make multiple attacks. All right, we're going to take a look at AMRAMs. Um, we need something bound here that's pretty important. Options, controls, uh, configure add-ons, Super Hornet. You need to make sure that you have bound throttle designation controller up, down, left, right, and depress. Up, down, left, and right will slew your TAD or your targeting cursor around your radar page, and then depress will lock what you have it slewed on top of. <clears throat> In here, uh, this is our radar, uh, airborne radar page, and I've got it set as soy, as you can tell by the diamond there. I'll turn it off, back on. Now it's soy. I can slew this targeting gate around. All right, right here, this number says 20. That means right now the radar is ranged out to 20 miles. You can use the OSBs here to range it even further out to 40, or to range it back in all the way down to five. Now you can also slew the TAD up to the top of the radar and once it goes off the top of the page it'll automatically range out to the next uh, range so it just went to 10 I'm gonna keep slewing it now it's at 20 and if I slew it back down it will go back to 10 okay so the name of the game is to get the enemies on this radar and lock them up and then we'll get some new symbology on the HUD that we'll work with this guy right here this diamond that's a friendly as indicated by green uh, ambiguous or unknown targets are yellow and then uh, known hostiles are red. I'm not 100% sure in the mod right now if it does actually do red targets or if it's just going to show everybody as yellow except friendlies. Alright, we're looking for targets and now there I've got a target that's an ambiguous. Uh, I'm going to shorten my radar up. There he is. He's right there about 10 miles because I'm on the 20 mile range and he's near that middle hash mark. I'm going to lock him up, and he's locked, and now the symbology here on the radar changes. Um, 
turn towards him and then pause it real quick and talk about the symbology. Okay, again, sorry for this block. The diamond is our target. 10.2 range from us. 420 VC is our closure rate, so we're now we're currently closing at 420 knots. Um, the ring right here, this is our targeting ring, and what will happen is from the top here, this um, is going to slowly unspool around this way. This little tail right here, you can't quite see, but it'll slowly unspool around this way. Um, once it unspools past this diamond here, this diamond will shift a little bit. Once it unspools past then, the target will say in LAR, and that stands for in launch acceptable range. That means that we can fire on him, and if he was not to maneuver at all um, or evade, we would get a hit. Um, the ticker will continue to unspool all the way down until it gets to this diamond here and passes this diamond. Once it passes this diamond, uh, the inlar will start flashing, and that's what's known as range no escape. That means if we launch when we're inlar and it's flashing, even if he maneuvers aggressively, the missile is very likely to hit him. Now, as we close distance even further, the uh, thing will continue to unspool all the way to there, and that would be minimum range. You wouldn't be able to fire once it passes there. So the idea is lock him up, hold him as close to the center of this as we can, and wait for us to get in LAR, and even a bonus if we can get him into a flashing in LAR. So I will unpause, and we'll go ahead and start closing. We're at 9 miles, uh, 370 closure rate. And you'll see at the very at the 12 o'clock of the targeting reticle is that foot that will start unspooling. There we go. In LAR, so we're now in launch acceptable range at 8 miles. If we let that thing unspool all the way to that arrow on the lower uh, left of the circle there, we'll be guaranteed a hit. However, in ARMA, we're pretty much guaranteed a hit right now. Um, but we'll go ahead and wait anyway. That's him locking us. He fired. We're in LAR. So I'm going to fox on him. Now I'm going to aggressively maneuver away, try and defeat his missile, although he had to jump on us pretty good there, so I can see smoke, so we got a good hit there. He is down. Right. And something else that's very useful, when you are in, uh, have your AMRAM up and you're just searching, this ring right here is essentially a flood mode, and you can dumb fire a AMRAM out in front of you and as long as there's a target within 10 miles that AMRAM will go pitbull and go track that target. So you can see we've got an enemy uh, or an ambiguous out there. Uh, looks like he's uh, almost 7 miles. We do not have a radar lock so I'm just going to launch two right out that direction. I'm going to immediately defend. And again there is no lock there. And as you can see, that's a splash out there. That is one dead bogey. So that's very useful um, to use that flood mode. However, uh, the missile will go pitbull, and it does not differentiate between friendly and enemy. So you never want to do that if there's any possibility of any sort of friendly or uh, civilian aircraft in front of you. So uh, all the AMRAM that we've covered so, much, so far is what's known as Beyond Visual Range, or BVR. Now we're going to look at ACM, or Air Combat. Um, mode. And there are three different configurations. There's more in the real aircraft, but just in ARMA there's three different configurations. So, uh, using sensor control switch, which we've covered in a previous video, but we'll just show really quick in the controls. Uh, you're going to want to bind it here. Sensor control switch up, down, left, right. That's what you use to do your screen soy, etc. When you're in the AMRAM, you can press sensor control switch up twice. All right, and now our radar is no longer functioning and we are in an ACM mode. This one is called boresight mode, okay? This small circle right here, if there's any enemy or any aircraft within that small circle ranging all the way out to 20 miles, they will be locked up, okay? That's how boresight works in the Hornet. This is similar to boresight, but it's longer and it's got a semi-active radar. So this 
Um, the radar scans very quickly left, right, left, right, left, right, up and down. It takes quite a while to scan. So if there is somebody out to 10 miles within that circle, they would be locked up. All right. And then the last mode is um, VSI. And I guess I should say that I'm using the sensor control switch left, right, and up to switch between these modes. OK, so vertical scan mode scans between these lines from about uh, about right here where your um, targeting indicator is it scans between those lines all the way up to about here okay it gives you a high vertical scan right off your um, your front of your nose and that is very useful for turn fighting and dog fighting like if you're in a turn fight and the bandits up here somewhere that radar will pick him up and lock him up there okay We've got a short example of that we'll link uh, here in just a second now all that said I did a fair amount of testing and I would not at all recommend right now either boresight mode or the wider um, the wide acquisition is what this usually is but that's not what it's called in Arma I wouldn't recommend either one of these they would lock enemies for me but I was like inside of five and four miles when I could get them to lock and that's just not right you, you should be getting them at, at 20 and 10 miles respectively. The VSI uh, vertical scan mode did work uh, fairly well for me in a dogfight, and I'll show that right now. Then we'll move on to the 9X. The AIM-9 family of missiles is a short-range heat-seeking missile, uh, about five mile range. <clears throat> if you listen, you can hear the growl there. That is the seeker head searching for a target. This dashed circle right here is an indication of this seeker head's area that it's looking. And it's as simple as placing an airplane within that circle uh, and being within that five mile range or inside of it. And we will get a change in missile tone and we'll get a shoot cue. So let's go ahead and go towards these enemies. Listen for the change in tone. There you go. There's the change in tone, the shoot cue. We'll go ahead and fire on him. And we're assuredly going to get a hit. These are fairly lethal, close range. Now, I know in the AMRAM video I did talk about how I wasn't happy with the ACM modes. And I'm still not completely thrilled with the ACM uh, flood mode with these um, infrareds, but the V VSI works really well with these missiles because um, you're typically in a close range dogfight when you're using this. So I've got the VSI up. Roll get into a bit Roll of a turn up. fight here. And there we go. We've already locked a guy that was way up off of our high 12. There he goes right there. I'm going to let him escape to the left a little. And let's let him go by because I want to demonstrate how high off the HUD we can get the lock on him. See, they're way up there off my HUD, way out of range, and uh, we'll go for this lower guy. Just keep turning. Once we get into the turn fight, you'll see we'll get him locked up way up Roll there. Up. Roll right. Just keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. And we should get a lock here shortly. There, see he's locked right there, way off foresight. He's already locked. We can pull him into the HUD fire and that's going to be a kill. The flood mode also worked a little bit uh, better in this but it was throwing an error for me um, so I wouldn't fully recommend it. All right the last thing that I want to demonstrate on this uh, AIM-9 is the helmet mounted sight and the ability of the AIM-9X specifically it has a really really insane maneuvering ability. It can take really really high off bore sight shots successfully so I've got my helmet mounted sight on um, that helmet mounted sight is right there HMD if you want to control or turn it on for helmet mounted device you'll see now I've got all the symbology on my HUD and that little circle there is uh, essentially a bore sight or the radar bore sight so I can place that circle onto this bandit way off bore sight uh, either way off here to the left I could lock them up or up high like that and uh, if we're in you know 160 degrees or so that missile will turn and track on them.
so I'm going to lock him up just by looking at him. See there, I've got the shoot cue, I've got a lock, I'll fire. And that missile came way up there and got him. I'll do the same thing over here now as he goes down. Try and turn and make a hard side uh, aspect shot. There we go. You can see that's pretty far outside of our HUD and he's running and it still hit him again. Way off the side, that missile will track. We'll turn and track on him. Yeah, he's in the water now. So the helmet mounted sight, specifically with the AIM-9X, is really deadly in a dogfight. Also does work with the AMRAMs, um, but they have nowhere near the maneuvering ability. However, if somebody was, say, out here, you could, you could go ahead and lock them. 